Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, this is Lionel coming with you today to share the gospel with you, the good news of the word. And today we're going to be going over um, John 14, verses 1 through 6. And uh, many of you know this word. This is uh, Jesus telling us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, so we're just going to jump right into it. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the way, the truth, and the life. But we're going to break this down into a three-part series. Today we're just going to focus on Jesus is the way. So many of us, um, you know, when we get in a vehicle and we're lost, right, we're looking for the way to get our direction to get back, right? So we're going to find the way and we're going to learn that Jesus is the way in his word today. So right off the back, we're going to get into it. And it says, um, let, uh, reading out of the King James, New King James Version, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself. That if where I am, there you may all be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. So, Father, we just join, um, ask you to join us in fellowship and in your word today, Lord. We pray to you, Lord, and we seek you, Lord, to, uh, to open our eyes and our ears and our heart to your word today. As your word tells us, the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth, Lord. So we just invite you into this reading and fellowship with us, Lord, and just give us um, insight on your word, Lord. Give us a revelation of your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Jesus says right here in John 14, 6, once again, Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus says right here, right off the back, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to the Father. We're going to focus on the scriptures that show us without a doubt that Jesus is the way to eternal life. Uh, right here in Psalms 25, 4, through 4 and 5, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day. Right off the back, the writer of Psalms, in this case David, the psalmist, is praying to our God, our Father, showing me, show me your ways, O Lord. David is asking the Lord to show him his ways. Right there he is demonstrating true intimacy with the Father. First, he's spending time with Him. He's spending time with His Father in prayer. Second, He is showing intimacy by asking the Lord to show Him your ways. He wants to know the ways of the Father. I want to know you. When you're intimate with somebody, you want to know details. You want to know everything. You want to know the way that person is, in this case, the Lord. You want to know His ways. You want to know His love. You want to, to know Him in ways that no other one, the way no one else knows Him, but you because you're intimate with Him. And I want you to know that the Lord, and He asked the Lord to teach me your past, Lord, the ways of the Lord. So He's asking the Lord to teach Him His past. Teach me your truth, for you are my salvation, Lord. You are my God. I will wait upon the Lord and rejoice all my days. Amen. For whatever is done, I'm sorry, John 1, 5, verses 4 and 5. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Salvation. Is overcoming the world, believing that God, that Jesus is the Son of God, and whoever believes in Him has overcome. Uh, scripture, scripture tells us right here that we are saved by grace through faith, 
not by good works, but a free gift from our God, our Father. Salvation in His Son, Jesus Christ, believing in the Lord. Jesus overcame the world through life, death, and the resurrection and the finished works on the cross. He who believes that Jesus is the Son of God is he who overcomes the world. We overcome the world because he overcame the world. He holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He sits at the right hand of the Father after completing the will of the Father. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son to die on the cross for our sins, that we may be set free and that we can come to the Father through his Son, Jesus. Proverbs verses, uh, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. So what he, He's directing our paths, right? He's leading us. He's showing us a way. There's a way to the Father, and this is it to Him. Through His Son, Jesus. It says, once again, Proverbs 3, 3, verses 5 and 6. We love this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. It starts in your heart. You have to trust in the Lord with all your heart and try not to understand everything. Remember, trust in Him even when it doesn't make sense. It's pretty simple. Praying about everything small, medium, or large. Invite him into the situation, whether good or bad, in everything, even the good. And then he can direct your paths because you're inviting him into the situation. You're asking God to, to deal with this, you're, whether it's good or bad. You know, you're asking the Lord to, to bring him into it. And that is relationship with the Lord because you're inviting him once again to the small things and to the big things. And when you have something come up and you need Him there, you don't even feel bad because you're always coming to the Father. It ain't like, oh, I'm going to Him because now I'm sick or now I'm hurting or somebody's in trouble or something, you know? Uh, Psalms 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and directs me and a light to my path. Your word, Scripture, is a lamp to my feet and directs my, the way and is the light to my path in this dark and fallen world that we live in today. So the Lord will direct your path and He will light it for you in this dark and fallen generation that we live in today. Amen. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he gets old, he will not depart from it. As a little child, while still little kids, show them the ways of the Lord. Teaching them to pray. Teaching them to worship. To read the Bible. To study the scriptures. And meditating on the scriptures. Ministering the gospel to them. Teaching them the ways of the Lord. This is the way you train up a child by your actions. They are watching. And the word says even when they are old, they will find their way back home to the Lord Jesus. Train up a child in the ways. Because if you don't show them, this world is going to show them. And the world, there's two gods. Okay? There's God the Father in heaven who we serve. But there's a fallen God here. A demon here. And he doesn't even have a name. He has a title. And his title is Satan. He's the devil. And he's here. John 10.10 10 tells us the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that thee may have life and have it more abundant. So, we serve God. But there's a God here, Satan. And he roams around like a roaring lion looking for souls to steal. And you have to, to, to train your children up because if not, they don't have a chance. 
You have to train your children. Listen to me. You have to show your children the ways of the Lord. But most of you don't even acknowledge God yourself. We have to start seeking God. We have to put God into our lives. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Genesis 18, 9, 19. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep the way of the Lord to do righteous and just, that the Lord may bring to them Abraham that what was spoken to him, the Abrahamic covenant. I have chose you. That is powerful. He is saying to you, you did not choose me. I chose you. The Lord chose you. It is important as men in the house that we know him and serve only him. Command our children and household to keep his ways of the Lord. Do righteousness and justice and the Lord will bless you through the Abrahamic covenant simply by being obedient to the word of the Lord. Living righteous and just in Jesus Christ. Living for Christ. Living holy, being righteous. Not that we are righteous or holy, but we are made righteous and holy through Him. And we live for Jesus Christ. Remember, you were bought for a price. You are not your own. And when you figure that out, that's when you will start to understand. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to the Lord. And we have to live as we live for the Lord through Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says a good man falls down seven times when he gets up. So we have to start getting up and wiping self down and repenting and asking the Lord to come in and change us and to help us with our situations that we have going on. We, we, can't, we can't just let the world run our lives anymore and tell us what to do. We live for God. We live for God. We are children of the Most High God. We are heirs of the Father. So we carry ourselves and live like children of the Most High God, not children of this world. We are not of the world. We are not of the world. We are of Jesus Christ. We have been conformed. Amen. Um, Joshua 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, nor for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The first thing he does is give us a command. Be strong and courageous. He commands you to not be afraid or dismayed or confused. Remember, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And most importantly, I am with you wherever you go. What did David say? Psalms 118, verse 8. If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Once again, wherever I go, you are there. If I make the beds, if I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. These are the ways of the Lord. These are the ways of the Lord. Uh, 1 Peter 5 8. Be alert and be of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Peter is stating here the way of the Lord is to be alert and to be aware that you have an invisible enemy, Satan and his demons, the fallen angels. Who we wrestle against. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Be sober minded. Do not let anything cloud your mind. Alcohol, drugs, sex, anything. You have an enemy. And Jesus, he gives you his, his title of Satan. Because Satan has no name. 
God stripped him from his name. He only has a title, Satan, the devil, the father of lies. He goes around prowling like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour, looking for souls. And so many people don't know Jesus. So many people, they don't have a chance. They have nothing. We have the blood to cover us. We have the Holy Spirit. We have God to take care of us. That's why Jesus died on the cross. That we can be forgiven. And that we can come to Him. And through the forgiveness, we are children of the God. So now we have a Father, and the Father takes care of His children. He looks for His children. He takes care of them. He looks at every angle. The enemy comes to deceive and steal and kill. And God protects us because we don't see it, this coming. That's why Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 tells us to put on the armor of God because we fight a an enemy that we do not see. Thank you, Lord. All right, Luke 24, 32. Then they asked each other, why not our hearts burning within us while we talked with us on the road and opened the Scriptures to us? Now, this was right after the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was walking with them, but when but He hid Himself from them, and they did not know it was Him. And this was on the road to Emmaus. He explained the Scriptures to them. One could say that He got revelation of the from of the Word, from the Word. That had to be totally awesome. He also revealed himself to them, and they seen the resurrected King, our Lord Jesus Christ, after his resurrection. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. Pray, and the Holy Spirit will reveal God's Word to you. If you're trying to read the Scripture and don't understand it, you will never understand it, because God will, His Holy Spirit will reveal it to you, because it is difficult to read. It is, you do need of help reading the Bible and the Holy Spirit will will help you. It will it will teach you. It will show you things. It will it will it will bring it to your remembrance. And uh, this is how we learn the way of the Lord by applying His Word to our lives. So we don't just have to read the Word and understand the Word. We have to actually apply the Word and live the Word. And usually that's by spreading the word, the gospel, sharing it with people, or however God is using you in the area that you have been called, because you have been called. And you need to walk in your calling and serve the Lord. So right here in John 14, 6, 1 through 6, it says right here, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you to go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Amen. And where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? How can we know the way, Lord? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do not allow your heart to be troubled by things of this world. Bring them to the Lord, especially in the times that we're living in now. We have a pandemic going on. We have division in our country we have so much hate going on we have a lot of a lot so we just ask the Lord to help us in all our situations show us love let us show love to the people and, and let's just invite God into this situation because only God can come in and heal our land and we need healing in our land in our nation 
So believe in our God the Father and believe in His Son Jesus Christ also. He has prepared a place for you and will come back to receive you to Himself. And we will be with Him for eternity. And where I go, you know the way. Thomas, his disciple, asked, How can we know the way? All right. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me except through the Father. And how can we know, and, ha and how can we come to the Father? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. We believe in his Son, Jesus Christ. We confess with our mouth that he is the Son of God and that he died on the cross and he rose and we will be saved. And it isn't just by pronouncing the words, it's believing. Did you not understand where it says right here, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son for whoever believes in him. That ain't just a person can say, oh, I feel like being saved today. I'm just going to say I believe and I'm going to say this beautiful prayer and I'm good. You know, as a pastor, you can fool the pastor, you can fool me, no problem. But that isn't what we're going for. What we're trying to do is change a person's heart because you believe from the heart. And when you believe with the heart, then you can confess with your mouth. Then you can confess that He is Lord and that He is King and invite Him to be Lord and King in your life. And repent from your sins to turn around from your evil and ask Him to be forgiven because we have all have sinned and we all fall short. And He forgives because He is a good God and He loves us. And He gave His only Son for you. For you. His only Son. Now you tell me what God will do that. It right here it says, The Word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Amen. So salvation is the key, right? Salvation is, is, the, is, is the first step in Christ. Because when a person gives their heart to God, since we're speaking on this, when a person gives their heart to God, you know, we say that they're saved and they go to heaven. So everybody thinks that that's just it. But no, salvation is a process. You are being saved. You're, 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 you were saved by grace through faith. So you're being saved. So salvation is a process. Uh, saying the words, yeah, you, get, you, 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 you give your heart to God and then the process starts. But the first thing is to believe in the Lord and to want to change and to want to give your heart to God. And not everybody does that because everybody loves the world and everybody loves the things of the world and the, and the things that we have in this world. And the world doesn't have nothing for you. The world has nothing but death. The world is not a good place. So, you know, we have an opportunity today. The Bible teaches us to repent and ask God to forgive you for your sins. So, I would like to give you an opportunity to, to ask God to come into your heart, to come into your life, to change, to, to make you a better father, a better mother, a better uh, worker, co-worker. Uh, you have to be tired of the things that are going on in your life, all the fear that surrounds us in this world that we live in today. So, we have an opportunity to to ask God to forgive you for your sins. I would like to take this opportunity, and, and uh, this is for someone who's wanting to change, someone who's who's tired of, of uh, the way things are, and, and they're asking God to come in and to change their lives so they can start impacting their family at home, changing their heart within themselves. And... Becoming a child of God and seeking God and, and serving God and your life will change you. You have to be tired of the things you're going. You've been living for the world for a long time. What does the world give you? The Bible tells us in Romans that uh, sin equals death. And death, we're not talking about physical dying because we're all going to physically die. But what he's saying sin equals death is it removes you from God. 
And a lot of Christian people have been sinning and they're being drawn away from the Lord. This message isn't just for everybody who's never met God, but there's lots of people who need to recommit and resurrender to the Lord and need to start finding their way back to the Lord, their path back to the Lord, and start serving the Lord and walking with the Lord. So I'm talking to you, my brother, my sister. So I would just like to take this opportunity and and ask you to say the, uh, the sinner's prayer and, and give your heart to God. And you know, there's really not a sinner's prayer in the Bible, but you heard what it said in the Scripture. I gave it to you. Believe that God is Lord and that He is the Son of God. That He died on the cross and confessed with your mouth and your heart and believe with your heart and you're saved. So I just want to share that with you. And if anybody would like to take a leap of faith, I would ask you to stand up boldly and, and, and uh, say this prayer, but mean this prayer with your heart. Uh, it's just you and God, you know. Just take this moment. So, Lord, we just ask you to open up the hearts of your people, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity, Father God, and that you may draw your children near to your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. That is our mission and our goal, Lord, is to win king souls to the kingdom, Lord, for your children, Lord, to be saved, Lord, that they may come and to know your Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May they have an intimate relationship with you, Lord. May they come to know you and come to worship and praise you and to serve you, Lord. So um, just repeat after me. Uh, Father, I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. I believe that your son Jesus is the son of God. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus rose on the third day. And I ask Jesus to come into my heart. And I make you my Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Lord. And I ask you to change my heart. To come into the heart. Start with my heart, Lord. Open my eyes and my ears and my heart to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So i just like to thank you. Uh, you know, Christ saying the prayer is one thing, meaning it is another. And when you mean that prayer and you say that prayer, because it's not something to take lightly. You know, you just, you're, you, you're, you just invited God to come in and clean house, brothers and sisters. And now you got to allow him to do it. There's going to be changes that he does, and, and, and that's all between you and him. He's going to let you know. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you, but you have to trust him and believe in him and allow him to come in. And he will. And, you know, the enemy's going to come upon you too as well because you just gave your heart to God. You just... You just, you're a new creation in Christ. You have been bought by the price of the blood, by Calvary, by his death. You were bought with a price now. You are no longer yourself. Sin ain't even going to feel right anymore when you sin because that's not you. And that's the salvation process that I was talking about. Just because you said the prayer don't mean all of a sudden you're like Mr good person, holy, and everything, right? No, God is changing you. Yes, some people are instantly saved, healed, delivered, but sometimes it's a process for others. So allow God to come in, work in your heart, be rejoiced today that you gave your heart to the Lord because now you're on the winning team. Now you have our Father God, Jehovah in heaven, his Son, Jesus Christ. They're doing your battles for you. They equipped you. You're chosen. You're called. So, you know, get in your Bible. Start reading your Bible. Get you a good Bible-based church. You need to start going to church, reading your Bible, and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in the truth. So, we would like to thank you.